NVIDIA is doing the most manipulative crap possible, and it's time we push back. The beans have been spilled, and Ryzen 11,000 will change everything. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, NVIDIA's RTX 5060 is here. And I'm not gonna have links down in the description to it. I'm not gonna suggest you buy it. In fact, I'm gonna say that you shouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. The reason being because NVIDIA is doing some really messed up stuff. And the reason they're doing it is very obvious. They don't even believe in their own product. So if they don't believe in it, well, you certainly shouldn't buy it. So what am I talking about here? Well, as you can see, it says NVIDIA grants RTX 5060 driver access to media willing to publish previews. And of course, without drivers, you're not able to do anything. So essentially what NVIDIA is doing is they're giving out RTX 5060s to reviewers, although I will say that I haven't heard a single peep out of my contacts, probably because they're unhappy about me revealing something sort of similar to this not too long ago, but I'll get to that in a second. Essentially what's happening is they're giving them the GPUs, but then aren't actually giving drivers, which basically means they just have a really expensive paperweight to anyone except those that are willing to do this quote unquote preview. One reviewer mentioned that they not only had no control of what games they tested it in, but they didn't even get to pick the GPUs that they could compare it to. To give you an example, we actually have some stuff from this quote unquote preview. You can see right here, it says first gaming benchmarks of the 5060. Ooh, gaming average. Whoa, man, the 5060 is amazing. I mean, wow, does it kill last gen? Oh, wait, 3060 isn't last gen. Where's the 4060? Yeah, if you saw my video where I discussed some conversations that I had with an AIB partner where they tried to push me into not comparing it with last gen, that was the 5060 Ti. And of course, I basically told them to kick rocks. If you haven't seen that video, definitely make sure to check it out. I'll have it up here somewhere. But essentially, NVIDIA is now doing the same thing, except this looks way, way worse. Simply put, you either agree to this preview or you don't get drivers, therefore you don't get to do a review until, of course, the uh, actual GPU is released and then people have to make that split second decision. Do I buy it without a review or, well, in this case, do I buy it with this preview. And this is seriously unacceptable. And it's ultimately something I think we should push back against. Reviews are there specifically so third parties are able to give their honest opinion on a product. If you're only allowed to show games that favor one side, it's not a review, it's a propaganda piece. It's essentially just marketing. So we should all be fighting back against this. If they don't want bad marketing, then they should make a good products. I have no doubt someone from NVIDIA is likely watching this video, so please comment below and tell them exactly how you feel. Now, I've told this story a couple times already, but last year when some hurricanes came through and knocked out the power, I was only able to post a video thanks to this power station that I bought myself from EcoFlow. Well, they're now sponsoring the channel and they sponsored this video so I can tell you about their awesome new power station, the River 3 Plus Wireless. This bad boy does it all because it's not only a power station and UPS, but it also comes with a 5,000 milliamp hour wireless power bank built right in for charging things like your phone. You can also take it out and attach it with the MagSafe magnet and it auto charges from the power station when you put it back in the slot. Now, I mentioned that it's a UPS as well, but it's not some bottom of the barrel UPS. It actually comes with an auto switch time of under 10 milliseconds and an output power of 600 watts. So you can make sure that your PC is safe in the event of a power outage. Of course, it's also a power station, so think of it like a battery powered generator. Basically, you've got to pick up the new power station in the description below. Plus, they have a new river 3 plus wireless bundle at Costco right now that comes with two 5,000 milliamp hour power banks with your purchase.
And next up for today, as many of you know, AMD is set to be at this year's Computex, and all rumors point to them announcing the RX 9060 XT, and they themselves essentially confirmed it on Twitter just recently, but the issue is that the keynote doesn't take place until pretty late into the conference, which means their AIB partners and board partners, all of them have already announced their new products. Well, it looks like Acer may have made a boo-boo because, as you can see right down here, they actually list the 9060 XT OC 16 gigabytes. And yeah, as you can see, they only have a 16 gigabyte model. Now, that's interesting because we know that 8 gigabyte cards are coming, but there was a leak claiming that AMD may phase the 8 gigabyte models out pretty quickly after launch, or at least not focus on them too much. Obviously, because gamers are sick of 8 gigabyte GPUs, it's simply not enough for even 1080p at this point. And maybe that's why we only see this here. I'm not sure, but according to pretty much all available data, 8GB cards are coming, but regardless, this 1000% confirms that AMD is set to launch the 9060 XT at Computex. And to get that info right when it's released, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld and hit that bell icon. And lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 11,000 CPUs are set to be a game-changing release. As many of you know, I recently went over some new information that we heard regarding AMD's Zen 7 CPUs, meaning not next-gen, but the generation after that. And while this may seem way too early to discuss, don't forget that AMD's always at least two generations ahead in terms of development. Either way, in that video, I discussed them moving to 3D cores. Not 3D stack cache or anything like that, but core-on-core -core designs. And as I showed you, AMD themselves have already discussed this. Well, in a new video from Moore's Law is Dead, he gives us a ton more information. And starting things off, in this document that comes from AMD, according to him, you can see that they show future core designs for Zen 7. And interestingly enough, you can see that it all comes from that architecture. So AMD is still sticking with one overall architecture. Either way, within it, we can see we're looking at dense core, classic core, then interestingly enough, here, low power core. And that may sound familiar because in my last video, I actually went over a leak from HXL, which included a low power core, though, of course, this is for Zen 6. But still, basically, this is absolutely showing kind of all of this come together and definitely looking to be fairly accurate. But then, at least when it comes to Zen 7, we're also looking at a 3D core. And that is what's obviously extremely interesting. It's it's kind of wild to see just how far AMD has gone, but let's just say 3D vCache is becoming old news. Because when it comes to this new 3D core, Moore's Law is Dead claims that AMD's goal is to bring a whopping 15 to 25% IPC uplift. More specifically, they're looking at above 20% in spec in 17. And they plan to do that with a build on TSMC's 1.4 nanometer tie. Not only that, but we're also looking at 2 megabytes of L2 cache per core and 7 megabytes of L3 cache per core. And in fact, he also showed what this looks like in this diagram. Diagram. You can see that the cores are stacked right on top of the cache. This really is pretty wild. Now, moving back here, he mostly goes over the Epic variant for this, which according to him, it utilizes 33 cores per chiplet, which means that it goes up to a whopping 264 cores. Now, according to him, Zen 6 is going to be the big one to get more cores. I think he said it was 256 cores, I believe. Regardless, that obviously isn't much of a jump from Zen 6 if that ends up being correct. And he actually said that this is very similar to what's going to be happening with their mainstream cores, think Ryzen. Basically, Zen 6 is going to be getting a pretty decent core uplift, but then with Zen 7, it's not going to get a really big uplift in cores, but it's going to get that huge IPC uplift. And he actually stated, this is pretty wild, he basically kind of compared Zen 6 to the uplift that we saw from Zen 1 to Zen 2, 
but then Zen 7 being Zen 3. And of course, Zen 3 was AMD's massive jump in performance that really brought AMD into their stride and started pushing back really hard against Intel. In fact, he claims that Intel would be going to essentially their version of 3D vCache at this time, while AMD is moving to this new core on core design, essentially leaving Intel in the dust. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's Ryzen 11,000? And don't forget to mention what you think about Nvidia's new push to control reviews. Let me know all of that down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.